Now, before we dive too deep into the symptoms and causes of vitamin B12 deficiency and what you can do about it, I think it's important to understand how vitamin B12 is absorbed uh, because this is where a lot of people are going to struggle for various reasons. Now, first things first, it's important to understand that vitamin B12 predominantly comes from meat. Most of your vegetarian sources of B12 are very poorly absorbed or not bioavailable to the body. So meat is where we really want to look to get our exposure. Now, I know some of you may be on vegetarian or plant-based diets. You really need to pay close attention to what I'm about to say because if you're following that type of diet, there's a very strong likelihood that you'll develop a vitamin B12 deficiency and irreparably harm yourself. Um, so if you're following that diet conscientiously or through you know, religious means, you may want to consider supplementation with vitamin B12. Now, that being said, we've got meat coming in. And what the first stop is the stomach. Once meat hits the stomach, there's different uh, protein chemicals that are secreted by stomach cells. In particular, we make digestive enzymes that degrade meat. But then we also have these very specialized cells called parietal cells. And you can see here in this blow up, these parietal cells secrete a substance called hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Now, keep that in mind. Hydrochloric acid is going to break the B12. So meat is attached to B12. And what needs to happen is that hydrochloric acid kind of cleaves the B12 off of the meat. Now, let's go to another factor that you need to understand. So if we look at, at this diagram here, I just draw your attention to this substance called haptocorin. Haptocorin is made by your salivary glands. And so what happens, as I said here, when hydrochloric acid cuts the B12 away from the meat, haptocorin produced by your salivary glands binds to the B12. And it serves as a sort of taxi cab or shuttle that helps take vitamin B12 into the small intestine into the, the top aspect of the small intestine. So again, B12 plus haptocorin complex enabled vitamin B12 to travel into your intestine. Now what happens once that B12 and haptocorin combo hits your small intestine, once it leaves the stomach and hits your small intestine, your pancreas secretes enzymes that will break up and digest that haptocorin, thus removing it out of the way. Why is that important? Because in order for B12 to be absorbed, it has to be attached to something called intrinsic factor. So it's, a very, it's, it's, it's one of the most complex mechanisms of nutrient absorption that we know of in humans. So again, we've got B12 coming from meat, hitting the stomach. The stomach's specialized parietal cells secrete acid that breaks the B12 off the meat. The haptocorin, which is made in your salivary glands, then binds to the vitamin B12 and carries or shuttles it into the small intestine. Once it's there, the pancreas releases digestive enzymes that break off the haptocorin so that the intrinsic factor can bind to your B12. Now remember, intrinsic factor is the other substance made by these specialized stomach cells. So that intrinsic factor travels with the haptocorin B12 complex into the small intestine, where then it can bind to vitamin B12. And that's a super important aspect because the B12 intrinsic factor mechanism or complex is what allows for vitamin B12 to travel the, the, um, the intestines to the distal ileum or terminal ileum, which is a the, um, the most furthest part of your small intestine because this is where vitamin B12 is absorbed. And, and it only happens through this intrinsic factor mechanism. If you don't have intrinsic factor, in essence, if your parietal cells are damaged, these specialized cells that make intrinsic factor, if those cells are damaged, um, your B12 absorption could be hindered. And there are several things that can, that can damage those cells. One of the most Kind of notorious is something called H. pylori, which is a bacterial infection of the stomach. Many of you maybe have, have heard of this or have been treated for this. Uh, it's, a, it's where they give something called triple therapy, which is an antibiotic therapy and an and a antacid therapy that um, basically is designed to try to kill that H. pylori bacteria. But um, 
If you have H. pylori, it can damage these cells, reducing your ability to make both hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. And that, again, can disrupt your body's ability to absorb that vitamin B12. Now, once you get that B12 intrinsic factor down into the, into the intestine, it's then absorbed across the membrane of the intestine into what's called the portal circulation. Portal circulation just refers to the blood that enters from your, or the, uh, the all things that enter your body from your intestines have to go to the portal circulation first because the liver has to vet anything coming in. And so this goes straight to your liver and then you store approximately one milligram of vitamin B12 in your liver uh, for a rainy day. Think of it as, back, as the backup plan. And this is one of the things that happens with plant-based diets is when you don't get enough vitamin B12 over time, that liver storage starts to deteriorate. You've got about a milligram in your liver and when that's gone, and for a lot of people going plant-based, this takes anywhere from 18 months to a couple of years for that storage to be depleted. And this is why a lot of people, when they go plant-based, many of them talk about, and we see this a lot anecdotally, they feel so much better in that first six months, even possibly to a year, and then they get a year plus in, and then their health starts to deteriorate, their energy starts to decline, anxiety is a common side effect here. It's because they're tapping the liver storage out. And, um, and once that happens, you've got big, big problems because B12 deficiency is, is a pretty onerous ordeal. I mean, it can, really, it can really do a number on your health. Now, let's talk about a couple of factors that can interfere with these mechanisms that we were just talking about. So number one, and that's actually not on this list. I think I'll, I'll come back to this other slide real quick. Um, it's, it's right here, your salivary glands. There's a particular autoimmune disease called Sjogren's. And um, Sjogren's disease is where there's an autoimmune reaction against these glands, and so your, your production of saliva is dramatically reduced. And in, and in that process, that can potentiate or lead to haptocorin deficiency, which is going to interfere with vitamin B12 absorption. So if you do have Sjogren's, you know, you want to keep that in mind. You should be having your doctor measure your vitamin B12 levels on a regular basis because you're at much greater risk for developing a deficiency. Now, there's some other things you can see here that can interfere. A lot of these interfere with intrinsic factor. IF is intrinsic factor, that substance that helps carry vitamin B12 all the way through your intestine for it to be absorbed. And so one of those things is a surgical procedure called a gastric bypass. So if you've had a gastric bypass in your life, know, understand and know that you um, have limited your intrinsic factor production and are at great risk for vitamin B12 deficiency. I used to teach a class on malabsorption post gastric bypass to GI doctors um, and, and even to date after, after teaching, uh, I still very rarely see GI doctors measuring vitamin B12 post gastric bypass. So if you've got this problem, you definitely want to monitor your B12. I mentioned before the H. pylori, the infection H. pylori, um, Helicobacter pylori can also reduce intrinsic factor and so can contribute to vitamin B12 deficiency. If you've had an ileal resection, um, you're at greater risk for, reduce, for reduction of absorption of B12 because this is the area where B12 is absorbed. So if you've, had, you know, if you've had a surgery where maybe you've had an inflammatory bowel disease or an obstruction and they had to remove part of your ileum, um, you need to have your B12 levels measured on a regular basis. Uh, other, other things that, that can affect this in a similar fashion, so beyond ileal resection, would be things like celiac disease, so if you're gluten-sensitive. Um, celiac disease impacts the small intestine. And so that inflammation in the small intestine can reduce your ability to absorb vitamin B12. Then we have bacterial overgrowth. If you've heard of SIBO um, and even, and even um, bacterial overgrowth in the large intestine, so it could be a small intestine or a large intestine, bacterial overgrowth uh, impairs the absorption of vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor. So if you uh, are being treated for a chronic SIBO type situation, have your vitamin B12 levels measured. If you've got Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, other inflammatory bowel diseases, 
you need to uh, monitor this. Now, there's an autoimmune condition called pernicious anemia as well. Pernicious anemia was, is a disease where you make antibodies against intrinsic factor or antibodies against the cells that make intrinsic factor. In my experience, this is largely triggered by gluten exposure. So just like celiac disease can be triggered by gluten, we see a lot of times pernicious anemia also driven. I've seen cases of pernicious anemia correct to a large extent when going on a gluten-free diet. And we also see people with, with um, dentures um, or poor um, dentition, so difficulty in chewing food, especially because remember it's from animal meats and so those are generally uh, chewier and, and uh, require more chewing. Um, so if you're swallowing your food or inhaling your food, this is gonna make it harder to get the B12 and digest it properly from those proteins. Um, then we have other reasons that you know vitamin B12 deficiency might be more uh, increased, more vitamin B12 consumption. Again, if you're on a plant-based diet, vegan or vegetarian diet, those can both um, you know, contribute to this. And then there's a, a number of different medications, proton pump inhibitors, metformin, and nitrous oxide, which is a common drug used in the dental chair when they put you with laughing gas, if you will, it's when they put you out. These are all things that can affect the absorption of vitamin B12. Um, what I want to focus on here, uh, we'll focus more on some of these others in a minute, but proton pump inhibitors. Remember, um, proton pump inhibitors, what do they do? They block hydrochloric acid. So they block your ability to make that acid, which is an important component of breaking the B12 off of the meat, helping you digest or break away the B12 from the meat. So if you're on Nexium, or any other antacid, prescription antacid, and even over-the-counter antacid, anything that hinders stomach acid, whether it's, um, whether it's a uh, proton pump inhibitor or another class of, of acid reduction medication, you're inhibiting or blocking hydrochloric acid. You're going to create, over time, if you're on it long enough, a vitamin B12 deficiency. So be aware, because many of you struggle with heartburn, and the first thing, the first tool the doctor pulls out of the tool belt when you've got heartburn is antacids, um, one of the most commonly prescribed drugs. And so be aware of that. 